Ngā mihi, ko June Grand Ahau, uh, nō te aroa, mai i makatūki tonga rero, ko Haturoa te maunga, ko wahea o te tūpuna, ko te puarenga te awa, ko te rau aroha, te whare manaki, uh, nō te whakarewere o te oke tāua a wahea o ahau, um, hoki ki Ngāti Tūwhare tō i te tāho taku ko raua ko Afi Northcroft, uh, nō Waitaha Nui Taupo. Mai makatū ki tonga rero. I thought I would start uh, in front of the painting that I did um, when I was a student um, at Waiariki and the painting was significant because I decided to do a series of paintings about um, our tupuna wahine in um, Te Arawa culture who uh, made important, uh, they were leaders of our community so um, starting with Whaka Otirangi, and Whaka Otirangi was one of our uh, wahine that came on the first canoes, the first waka that came from um, Hawaii. And she was uh, uh, credited with, with um, saving uh, some of our resources by the canoe was actually going into a whirlpool called, called um, Te Korokoro a Te Parata. And Whaka Otirangi scooped up the kumara and she saved it. So the essence of that is, is preserving things of, of importance for our future. And in that instance, it was preserving something that would help us to live and the kumara would help us to grow. But in the, in the bigger picture, it's preserving things of importance for us and our culture. And that goes with the arts, the culture and the language. All indigenous peoples of the world from the beginning of time, um, it, particularly with languages and other things, we needed to communicate who we were and what we did. So often we painted on the walls of our caves to tell our stories. So we'd be out hunting and fishing and we'd come home and we'd go, we need to tell that story. How do I tell that story? How do I, how do I communi that, communicate that to my group? So you paint pictures on the walls of your cave. Those pictures stay there for thousands of years telling that same story. I have always, um, uh, because of the, my, my love of Māori art and culture, um, gravitated towards the places where I know that, that my history will be told. And so the museum has always been part of my life. And everywhere we've been, my father would tell us stories about where we lived and where our ancestors were from, um, and they became the beacons. So the, the museum in our community is a beacon and we need to be going to that beacon all the time to talk about um, the histories of our people. And that happens all the time because um, in, our, in our past, in our ancestry, we have great ancestors who have told amazing stories. I think the experience must be the same as when we greet people um, normally in a, in a, um, a whakatau or a, a pōhiri. We always welcome people, uh, we let everybody know who we are, uh, we, we hear about what their stories are going to be and how they tell us. That's how a museum should be too. And it's just nice to see things that you can uh, reflect on and I would often go to the museum to see uh, I love the little video that you had about the war and the stories of the war because my father also served in the war and so that was very poignant for me. So you'll find that people will go there for their own stories to fill their hearts um, and, and you know the, the treasures that you see. So museums take a long time to get through and you won't see it all at once so it needs to be a place where you come back continually so to have that space is welcoming. I think that everybody has their own list of people that they consider important in their lives and we've all come through histories where our grandparents were part of certain movements. Um, my father worked in Māori affairs and that was an, another whole area of social development in Aotearoa. Those stories are interesting. The people he, my children don't know his, his group of people. He worked with people like John Rangiho and Karapoki Tapu and, and he used to write speeches for Iriaka Ratana when we lived in Whanganui and she was the first Māori woman in Parliament and Dad would write her speeches and who knew that we would drive out to Ratana Pa and you know and so 
um, coming from my my um, age group and I'm 74 this year so it's a long period of time so when I was a child um, my kids have got no idea who those people in my life were so I like bringing up those stories all the time of, of um, influential people in our lives that we met and made a difference to our community who've passed on you know politicians um, people in our own neighborhoods that were um, you know made an impact on our lives how we grew up um, everybody's got a story about um, you know we grew up going out birds nesting that was our our devices you know because and, and things have changed with our children and I think that um, to actually give them living experiences is a, a good way to experience the world.